Hello friends and welcome to our remote Alaskan cabin on the beach here. In case you're new, this is my husband's parents' cabin. They built it back in the 70s. They are very generous and let us come and use the cabin. And so we are here for a few days. We come to the cabin several times every summer and this is probably our final trip because school starts in about a week and a half. This summer, we have been using this Costco raft behind us for pretty much everything um, because the big boat, which is also my husband's parents, was not working. They were having all sorts of issues. It was really frustrating for them and we just made do with this little raft. Well, the big boat out there in the water is all fixed and running. So mission number one is to go catch some halibut. We're going on a halibut fishing trip as the family. As you can see, it is very calm. I'm very grateful for that. I have several kids that get sick if it's not calm. Our goal is to fill the freezer with halibut. Before coming to the cabin this time, I put a question out on our YouTube community post tab thing. Uh, any questions you have about the cabin, I will be answering those periodically throughout this trip. The question we get most often is about getting down here. Yesterday was our travel day. Mark and three of the kids took our small airplane and flew to Seldovia. Takes about a two hour flight, hour and 45 minutes, and Bennett and I drive. And the question that I often get is, why does Bennett drive all the time? Well, Bennett doesn't love flying. He gets sick in the airplane. And so he chooses to drive. All the boys can choose whether they wanna fly or drive. The other three always choose to fly because it's so much quicker. The real issue with flying and driving is we need a lot of stuff when we come to the cabin. We bring all our food. We got to bring all our stuff. It's very heavy. The airplane is weight based. We can't overpower the airplane. So Bennett and I bring all the food. We bring a lot of the supplies with us and then Mark flies with the boys and it all works out. Um, Bennett and I have our routine. We really enjoy it. We download an audiobook at every time and just really enjoy our time together. And then we all meet at the cabin and it all works out. So that's question number Number one right now we're gonna go fishing and then I'll answer some more questions throughout the couple days we're here at the cabin very low tide so because we don't have a dock here at the cabin we have to use this pulley system so hunter is currently pulling us out no you can't have a dock because the tides are just too much People tried to and they ended up all over the bay. So we gotta wear these hip waders to get on and off and then we usually will bring other shoes to wear when we're on the boat, but it's sometimes really tricky, but luckily the weather is really nice right now to be able to pull the boat in and out. Okay, we made it out to our spot. It took us about 30 minutes to ride out here. We're getting our rods rigged up. You have to use a large weight. Mark, will you show what we're using for bait? Can I have a piece of hooligan? Thank you. Okay, we're at Weston's cutting up some hooligan, this little smelt fish. Um, be careful. We got some pink salmon here we're going to be using as bait, part of that. And we got, and we got some octopus. Figure that out. Okay. It's a little bit chaotic as we get everybody rigged up, but hopefully this is the spot. We're praying. Ooh. Hundred oh. pounders each. No, we just want a bunch of chickens. Fill the freezer. The bottom ever. Okay, excuse me. All right. First fish on. Hunter's reeling something in. We can always say Hunter's gonna get the first one. You're better. It's your. No, I am. So these are the little squid we use, and then 
you do the hooligan, which is really oily, but you need something else that's stronger, like the piece of salmon or octopus to stick around, because they'll just eat the hooligan right off. So we're reeling up from about 150 feet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a fish on it. Just wait a sec. Wait, wait, let me see. Yeah. Everett, wait, wait, let me see. Let me Dad see. needs to pull it out and check. You gotta set the hook. I think I might have West. Really oh, you do have something. Oh, wait, you do have something. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got something. Okay, here. You want to reel it in? No, no, no. Oh, we got a cod. That is a big cod. Yeah. Not put in all the yeah. Yeah. Hold on just a second. Hold on a second. Oh my goodness. Oh that is my a God. big cod. Wow, nice. Everett's is something small. That's a nice cod, Hunter. Cute. Perfect for tacos. Oh my goodness. Whoa, whoa, yes. You are Weston, okay. get back okay. over here. Oh, Weston's got something too. Oh, I should drop. Yes, you should. Oh, gosh. Okay. Okay. Wow, Hunter. A little bit of chaos here. <laughs> Huh? Oh man, hey. those longer fire. Start actually the check. Oh, I just check. Can you still have a pick? I think he's got something really small. Okay, Weston. You're almost free. Weston, I'm dropping it. Okay. You are free. Can you see Everett's little halibut? Do you want to reel your foot all the way? Let's check your bait. Okay, yeah, there's your little halibut. Can I have your mind? Yeah. I want to hold it. Oh, I want to kiss it. <laughs> <laughs> it's still got his. Oh, okay. I'm gonna let it Okay, bye bye. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> barfed it out for you. Here's your bait back. <laughs> 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 and I almost caught it in my mouth. Okay, I think Bennett might have one here on the front of the boat. Our depth finder is not working, and so it's a little bit hard to know how deep we are. There's some shelves out here. You don't want to get Woo! too deep. I think I have one. Oh, I got something. It'd be really cool. Do I have one? I got one. There we go. Look at that. Nice, You want to reel it in? You want it? Sure, I'll take reel in. Sometimes because we're moving with the current, you'll kind of go through a spot and get a couple. With these big tides right now, it's kind of hard to stay in one place. Keep going, Westy. Oh, that is she's so soft. Not bad. Oh, well, we're keeping it. Oh yeah. Right into the fish hole. Woohoo! You want to lift it up a little more? Oh yeah, that was hard Yeah, little. that's a good little chicken. Oh, that's perfect. That's a perfect. I can't take this, please. We're having a little fish dance in there. Hey, Westy, let's see what you got. Okay. Just keep reeling. I'll tell you when I... All right, here's Westy's fish. Hey, Ev, that doesn't help. No, no it's okay, Ever. You got to hit him in the brain. Nice job, Weston. So nice that's fish. Fun. Do you want a picture with it? Oh, ah. Oh, yeah. It'll be good eating. That's it's a, it's a smaller one, but that's it's great. Yeah, that's good. Hey, you're on the board. Well, enjoy eating it. Right, where's Cap? Mama's got one. Mama bear. Oh, I see it. Oh, you got a nice cod. Oh, Irish Lord. No, no, no. Oh, <gasps> that's got to be the biggest Irish Lord ever. Biggest sculpin ever. Big oh, my God. Oh. Holy moly. I caught one. Ugly. Like. Wrong kind of fish. I no, one thank one. you. Let's keep it. No. Look at all that meat on it. Uh. <laughs> all that bone. Dad, the, oh, man. Dad, the sea life center. Maybe we, maybe we do need to move back up to a 
a different spot. I, I think this one doesn't have any bait. Alrighty. I never liked the outfit. Well, these guys have such a huge mouth. Bit. Okay, we motored to a new spot because we had drifted about a mile and a half. We came back to where it's a little bit shallower. Now we're still drifting. Nobody's caught anything yet, but we're hoping we'll drift through a good spot. Okay, we got Mark with the fish on. Wait, did you have Oh, God. I got it we weren't getting anything and except for stealing a bait. Now Mark's finally pulling up something. Feels like a decent yeah, size, huh? It's yeah. really bending the rod. Like a oh, I don't know if it's that big. <laughs> Woo! That's a good one. Yeah. Mark's on the board. Look no, at no. this. What's happening? Hey, Hendrik, can you move to the side a little bit so I can try? Can you hold this for a oh, second? I think that's our biggest one so far. Can you hold the rock fish, please? Oh, okay. Hold on. Don't look oh. it. It's a good one. Yeah. Wait, can you move back just a little bit? Is it close? Okay. Hey, oh, you're letting slack on it. Okay, just lift your rod tip up. Lift your rod tip up. No, no more. It's hard to maneuver. Yeah. All right, that's a good one, Ben. That's Bennett. a really good one. Yep. Okay, right. we're at six, right? No, five. Five. With about three hours of fishing, we were able to catch all of our halibut. That's 12 halibut, two each. We took turns reeling them in, which is actually really awesome because sometimes you go out for five or six hours and come home with one or two halibut or nothing at all. It's never a guarantee. So we did have those 12 halibut plus two cod to go home with. None of them were huge, but they were really great. It's always fun to catch a big 100 pound plus halibut, but a bunch of medium and little ones taste so good. The meat is really nice and tender, and it was just a great day of family fishing out on the water. Well, success. Got some fish. The weather is decent. We can fill the freezer. Hunter is driving us back to the cabin. I'm next. Made our way back to Soldovia. We are at Soldovia Fuel. You can see there's a ladder right there with seaweed all the way up it. Luckily, we don't have to climb up. We call the head and they will uh, lower down the gas pump. Sorry, I'm just waking up. I kind of fell asleep for a few minutes on the way back. Is this supposed to? Oh, push the little button there and it pops up. Dad, while well, you're waiting, can you No, I can't. I can. What's the price per gallon here? I don't want to know. <laughs> That's the price. Last I heard, it was around eight. Oh. Yeah. What the heck? For unleaded. Yeah. Yikes. That's, that's more expensive than an eight -act. Yeah, it's like almost twice the price by our house. Mm -hmm. could have more that is a really it. long piece of seaweed. Yeah. 
25 gallons, all right. How many gallons does this hold? 80. Oh my goodness. What, how many? 80. He started. Okay, now we take a sled down, bring all the fish up from the boat. I am a little chilled. I'm gonna go get some food going for everybody. They bring all the fish up. Yes. Thank you. Thankfully, the conditions are really good right now. We've got a rising tide and it's very calm. If you come in and the waves are coming in, it can be really hard to land the boat and get everything off, but we've got good conditions. It was a good, good trip. If you saw my Costco video, I wasn't sure about the nectarines, but I found one box that smelled good. And one day later, two days later, they are just perfect. So I'm so glad I grabbed them. We've really been enjoying them. Okay, this is where things like this tortilla soup come in really handy. We've been out on the boat since breakfast. It's now like 1.30. We're all really cold and hungry. This will be really quick and easy. Okay, with bellies full, it is now time to fillet the fish. Bennett and Hunter are helping Mark, and then we'll all work on packaging them up. And since we're gonna be here for a few more days, we will be taking them over to a fishing charter. They, you can pay to put them in the freezer there. So we will be doing that just to preserve the fish till we can get it home and into the freezer. We do have to cover it with a board here. You can have problems with eagles coming and swiping your fish, so we try and keep them covered until we get to them. Good, Bennett, right there, yeah. Oh, yeah, uh -oh. see, that's perfect. That looks so good. You get right to the skin there, and then we'll... So right along here, you can cut around that fin. And then... I'm just... I, 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 you barely need to cut through the skin. You don't have to cut... See, that's deeper than you want. And then right here, you can kind of peel up just a little bit with the knife. Or... It's been a while since I've done a halibut because we only got Good one time. halibut when we were. There you go. Right, see? Mm -hmm. And this one is the same thing right here. Yep. There you go. There you go. You can go get out of it. Yep. You may have to readjust the grip every once in a while. You get it. Perfect, just like that. Oh wow, that was actually super clean. Yeah, worked really good. Well, we're cleaning our halibut and we found something really, really interesting. As we're cleaning it, normally their backbone goes straight all the way down. This one has this big whoop de doo and we thought it was just maybe kinked from laying in the fish box, but no, this one was injured and uh, it's got a wiggly tail. It's really bizarre. Never ever seen one like that. Now you can, when you flipped it over, you can really see this kink in the tail. So bizarre. Well, Hunter and I are down to the last couple fish, and we already got Mr. Eagle showing up here. Got a whole beach cover of the carcasses. He looks a little nervous. Well, we're gonna we're gonna keep at keep at this. We just got one or two left, and we already got one and a half five gallon buckets full of meat. So it's going along, it's going along well. Well, all wrapped up, and we got one five-gallon bucket here full of fish, and one half full. Got to take these in and put them in bags and finish processing them. 
Oh my goodness, uh, that is like gotta be 40 pounds there at least of meat. Bucket number two. There was a light, there was a light bulb that went under a bridge. It was happy and then so, there was an arrow on the side of the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and? Nanny, Nanny was sad and Nanny... All right, we've got a lot of packages of halibut to finish. And then Hunter and Bennett have started making dinner. Hunter has all this beautiful broccoli from our garden. Got these three beautiful broccoli to take with us to the cabin. They're gonna be delicious. And then we're having the fried cod. That's weird. Fried and halibut cheeks. And halibut cheeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let it cook a little bit more. Here's our finished product. This is the halibut. We decided to do it in pancake mix this time. We haven't done that before. It tastes pretty good. Really good, actually. It tastes like a, a marshmallow. Broccoli. Oh, that is a marshmallow. Those are marshmallows. We're gonna have some. Some tartar sauce and some stuffing, and then the boys cooked up a couple fried marshmallows with pancake mix. With pancake mix. Okay, we're gonna go eat out on the deck because we still got our halibut project going on here. We're okay. There you go, Everett. Everett's view with Neil with a view. I can I can definitely see how you fit one of these. Oh, you must like that fish, Everett. There's nothing left. You want more? No? Okay, I'm gonna get some more. I will. We are on the final stage of this wow. fish. So we add a little bit of water to help with freezer burn. And then we suck the air out. Oops. And then we put it in here, ready to go get frozen. Okay, we are having some after dinner fun. Mark just got back from taking the fish over to town. And we have this amazing obstacle course here built by Mark's sister, Sarah and Mark. And then um, Sarah's husband has also helped over the years. A lot of it is built from things we find washed up on the beach. So you've if you've been here a while for a while, you've seen we have swings, cargo nets. She has spent quite a bit of money, she reminded me, on getting bolts so that we're not hurting the trees. And so she's done a lot of research and built all these amazing things. And the kids have hours and hours of fun. You might hear something new in the background. So they came for 4th of July and she came with a plan and built something awesome and new back here behind our bunkhouse. First of all, we have to admire this amazing stand that they built, like a platform. Here goes Everett for a ride. Oh yeah, there's a spring at the end that stops them. It's starting to rain. I didn't expect that. I would have put my jacket on. Okay. I bring it back. Lots of different ways to do it. There is a handle on the top, but Everett's not quite big enough, so he just sits. Oh, are you okay, hon? Dad, I did that too. Grab it, grab it quick. I was looking up. I did that too, except I did my focus was on the kids. No. Here goes Westy. Oh. No Woo! Oh, the 
mosquitoes have definitely come out since the last time I was here and these little flies, they kind of drive you nuts. I must be tired, this ground feels so soft. Ooh, backwards. Hunter's a little tall if he doesn't sit on feet. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah and Ben. You did an awesome job. Wait, what? Oh, yeah, hit me. Oh, wait, I gotta get my sleeve ready. Mom went inside, and these other boys have decided to go nuts so crazy. <laughs> what? I think they're trying to take it up on its 350 pound weight limit. What do you want to do, Everett? I want to go to our base. Our base? Oh yeah, we should go check that out. Right in the bend. Let's go check out your base. How are they? We found it, Dad. I know, we built it. Man, I can hear our neighbor working on his cabin over there. Must be hammering away. Ooh, there's that bed, isn't it? Tell me about this. This is my bed. Yeah. It's actually kind of nice. Uh huh. We, but it can be better. A lot better. Yeah, you cleared all the bushes over here and all the tree, all the stuff. Cleared all the bushes and branches. Nice opening here. When we throw our fish carcasses out on the beach, you can kind of see a couple here, the eagles come immediately. But by this point in the year, they're not ravenous and hungry. So the carcasses tend to sit there for a lot longer. Eventually they'll either just wash away or the eagles will be like, oh, maybe we want a snack. But they've been there for hours and there haven't been any eagles, which is kind of sad. We love the eagle shows but that's just the nature of it being later in the year. They're not so hungry. I know you've heard me talk about the weather all summer long. We are seeing the effects of it here down at the cabin as well. Usually this is completely a field of fireweed. We're not even sure if these are gonna get flowers this year. They've got the green leaves, but not a single flower in sight. Usually it's in full bloom by now. If you saw our video when we came this time last year, huckleberry season. Huckleberries everywhere. We picked gallons of huckleberries. I'll go show you one of the blueberry, huckleberry plants, sorry. Uh, a huckleberry is an Alaskan blueberry. Blueberries grow low to the ground on the tundra. Huckleberries grow on bigger plants. Now I've seen people picking huckleberries up in like Fairbanks area. They got a more normal summer this year. They got lots of warm days, lots of sunshine. Here at the cabin, I think they got even less sunshine and less and more rain than we did at home. So here is a huckleberry plant and there's just like nothing on it. Absolutely nothing. It just didn't develop. So Thankfully, we still have some in the freezer from last year, but that's just the nature of it being a very rainy, cold, wet summer. I'm just not sure they're even going to come on later. May, yeah, anyways, I'm still wearing my beanie, long johns, wool socks. <laughs> Hopefully we'll get a little bit of sunshine though. Today has been pleasant. Not nearly as cold as it was earlier this summer, but still not warm. I am going to take a shower. I just feel like a shower before bed would feel awesome. We have a propane shower back here in the woods that uses runoff water from our stream. And I'm gonna get showered before bed. Water on. Ben pulled out the, um, that, um, 
See you on the other side. Well, shower was not a success. You got it going, and then all of a sudden it just like went back to 50 degrees. So then I started it again. It went from 50 degrees up to 90, and then immediately back down to 50. So I scrubbed some essential parts really quick, didn't do my hair or anything, and got out of there because it's really cold. And um, we'll have to try again. Mark's gonna work on the battery or something. It just, something is malfunctioning. So no leisurely cabin shower tonight. Oh well, beautiful evening out here on the bay. Time to get the kids to bed. <sighs> so peaceful. All right, Hunter and I are back out fishing again. Uh, just the two of us. See if we can catch some more fish. We are trying to watch these rods, see if we get any halibut bites. It's probably calmer, probably calmer today. Calmer today than yesterday when we were out with the family and almost like a bathtub out here. It's pretty amazing. Something heavier get on, like as you were. That? Oh, there's nothing. That was weird. Huh. Well, maybe let's just move a little bit. Try it over. Right. Well, nothing even nibbled our bait. It's all here. We're going to go try another spot. We just changed spots, and Hunter thinks he's got a bite. We'll see. Yeah, we are moving maybe faster than before. Feels like it might, even with that weight, my line's way out there. Uh, sure. I don't think it's gonna need a gap. I don't know. It's not. Can't be that big because I'm able to get it fairly easily. Hunter's got one now. Yeah. Feels good. Oh, I see it. Yeah, I see it down there. It's a halibut. Oh, yeah. Nice, nice, oh, nice. That's a good one. Okay, let me grab the, uh, let me grab the gaff. Not too bad. Oh. What? How is it that small? <laughs> How is it that small? I think you might actually let that one go. How is it? Huh? What? That's because you fought it from so far away. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, there you go. There's four halibut. Those are all good size. They're not really chickens, but they're... Oh, these smaller ones are. That one is a good one, though. Okay. Here, you want to hold that? Sure. All right, awesome. Oh, you can pop right off. There you go. Huh? Well, there we go. We got our limited halibut. Hunter and I each got two halibut. We're ready to go catch some king salmon. 
So now that we limited out on halibut, we're switching over to troll for some king salmon and some silver salmon. So Hunter's getting the rods rigged up. Uh, we're gonna use these big flasher things. These spin around underwater, create a lot of disturbance. And then behind them, we've got a hook right here and we're gonna put a herring on that. And everything goes to plan. We'll hopefully catch some, some coho or called silver salmon or some king salmon here. They're both running right now. Okay, for bait, we're gonna use some of these small little herring like this. Slide that head right down in those. There, there you go. I think that's good. Okay. Then what I'll do is I'll take this. I pull that lion snug just a little bit more. Oh yeah, I see it. What is it? I don't know. Okay, hey, Hunter's got a fish. I think. It's kind of hectic here. Oh, got to turn the boat. Okay, do I need a... Uh, it would probably be good if you adjusted us a little bit. Okay, there we go. All right, buddy. That's a massive pink. That is a big, big pink salmon. All right, there you go, bud. There we go. Salmon number two. Yeah, another pink salmon. Got it. You need some help? You got the boat? Yeah, hey, we got. I need your help, boys, to pull the rope in. A little bit. The pink salmon. Oh, Dad, the, how far is it out? Uh, it's a ways. But Dad, was the halibut fishing hot? It was pretty hot. We tried it. Well, we tried one spot and there was almost nothing. Uh, and then we went to another new spot, pretty close by, and we. Ah, you got me! No, no, no! <laughs> okay, time to answer some questions from. YouTube. First one was, is your husband able to completely unplug from his work when you go to the cabin? Mark has no trouble unplugging, especially at the cabin. This is his happy place. Um, there are way more things to do than time to do it. So he has a great time. He has no hot trouble unplugging. That doesn't mean he doesn't have to sometimes answer work emails or do a Zoom call or something. We do have cell service here at the cabin. Um, it's not the greatest, but he is able to work if needed but mostly he just plays and has no trouble unplugging who takes care of luna while we're at the cabin was the other part of that question and it is either if my parents are home they just open their door and let her come in and out and hang out um, if she's not there then we'll have a friend come in or she'll go to somebody's house just depending on how long we're going to be gone usually she gets to stay home and then either somebody comes into the house or my parents are there so and last part of this question was, what are your secrets on contentment when the weather doesn't cooperate? And I just really feel like over the years I've realized like the outcome of things doesn't necessarily mean whether you're happy or not, like catching the fish or seeing the Northern Lights. You just have to like enjoy the process and you can find contentment no matter the weather. I do say all the time dress properly and you can enjoy it more. Um, you know, we haven't had very many sunny days here at the cabin this summer, but we've still had a great time and lots of good memories. And we just make the most of it no matter the weather. So I'd say we still had a great summer, even though the weather has just been very, very different. It's just different. We just have never had a summer like this since Mark and I, we could ever remember, but especially not since we moved back. Um, 
it's just always been a few more sunny days so okay the next question was do any of the boys want to become pilots like mark hunter do you have any desire to yeah, fly i would really like to become a pilot when i get older I think that'd be really that's, fun that's good do you want to be a pilot one day maybe do you want to be a pilot one day no all the kids have different interests. We're excited to see where life takes them in the future. Hunter wants to be, at this point, Hunter would like to be something like a wildlife biologist and live this lifestyle. The others don't really, we don't know. So time will tell. Bennett's in here making us some moose spaghetti for dinner. Thanks for helping. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Just maybe a minute or two more and then add the sauce. Hey, Weston. Do you want to be a pilot one day like dad? Yeah. You do? Okay. I am. I just don't want to get sick. <laughs> Bennett says he just doesn't want to get sick. I hear if you're the one flying the airplane, you don't get as sick. Because Paul used to get really sick. But if he's the one flying, he doesn't get sick. Yeah. Something to keep in mind. All right. So do we ever come to the cabin in the winter? Um, I have not come as an adult. My sister came for all of spring break with her kids and there was three feet of snow here. I used to come, usually we'd come between Christmas and New Year's when I was a child, but the logistics are really tricky in the winter because the boat gets put away and there's ice out in the water. And so uh, we don't get make it down here really at all. It can be really tricky flying the plane and having to deal with all that stuff in the winter. So mostly we come from May to September. Nice peaceful evening. Kind of the calm before the storm. Mark and Hunter and Bennett just went across to town. Hunter and Bennett were taking the fish to the Airbnb place to freeze it. And then Hunter is picking up, not Hunter, Mark is picking up the family. Mark's parents are coming and then two of his sisters. And then, so one sister has five kids. The other sister has two of her kids with her. So they are coming here in just a few minutes. I just saw the ferry pull in. Um, so we'll be here together for a day and a half. And then Mark and Hunter are going to take off on their goat hunt from here. And I'm going to head home with three of the boys. So we're going to have a fun couple days together. In the meantime, while it's quiet, I will answer another question. A question I got several times was, what would we do in the case of an emergency here at the cabin? So we are pretty remote, but if it was just like a mild emergency, we would get on the boat, go to town, and take a ferry or the airplane to Homer. Homer is the closest town and it does have a hospital. So that would be our first resort if it was just like a minor emergency. If we had a bigger emergency, we would call 911 and hopefully they would life flight whoever had an emergency out of here. That is an option. Um, I think that's what we would do. <laughs> Thankfully, 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 we've never had anything big enough where we've had to rush anybody out of here. Um, we've had a couple cuts and things that we've been able to deal with. Um, in the town of Soldovia, there is a clinic, but there's not a doctor there every day. The doctor's only there every once in a while. So if you got hurt, you'd pretty much need to make your way over to Homer. So those are our options. Thankfully, like I said, we haven't ever had to use those at low tide here, they could land an airplane if they needed to. They could land a helicopter if they needed to. Um, most likely we would try and get somebody over to town because there is a full runway and helicopter pad over there. But um, if it was a really extreme emergency, we could probably get them taken right here from the cabin. Now somebody asked if we are both from Alaska. Mark was born and raised here. His parents moved here in the 70s. I moved here when I was 14. My dad worked for FedEx and he got a manager's job up here. Um, Anchorage has a major hub for FedEx. So that was why we moved here when I was 14. And other than going away for college, this is where I have lived. This is where I call home and um, love it here. I lived in Texas before that. I was born in Virginia. Um, so I know heat of Texas, but I love 
Alaska. And we have no plans of being anywhere else. Never say never, but we don't have plans of moving. We love it here. Family has arrived. Yay! Well, I didn't end up filming very much once the family all arrived. There was just a lot going on, people everywhere, and we were trying to catch up with everyone. But we did have such a great time together. I failed to film, but we did have fun. I did happen to capture a quick video of these awesome halibut tacos that we made to feed everyone. They turned out so delicious and was a really nice family meal to have together. Always so good to have fresh halibut. Oh, Everett, there's some fish in there. Can we get you some fish? Can I get you some fish? Okay. Blake, will you put a piece or two of fish? Oh, Blake, there's more tortillas if you wanted one. I just want those chips. Okay, perfect. There you go. Thank you. Here you go, Everett. There you go. Okay. Okay, friends, the day has come to go home. I did not film much once the family arrived because it was just family time and I get, you know, kind of wrapped up all in that. It's always, I think, the sunniest day when it's time for us to leave, but luckily the rest of the family is getting to stay and enjoy this. I'm heading home with Weston, Bennett, and Everett. Mark and Hunter are headed off on a hunt today, and then we're just going to make our way home. We had a really good time here at the cabin. We got to go pick up our halibut from the freezer and get our ferry tickets and say goodbye to the cabin for this summer. Okay. We got our halibut. We got the other one. Put this mic on. Well, this Can we just set it up here? Oh, yeah. yeah it's got the different seats. Perfect. All right. We're getting this from the Saldovi uh, fishing adventures. Do you like those seats? They're nice. If you come to Saldovia, they do halibut charters. They're an Airbnb. Super kind. Check them out. If you ever make your way to this part of the woods, we're headed over to the visitor center to buy our ferry tickets called captain's chairs. I thought I wanted those, but I actually prefer the ones with the seat. I prefer the benches for what we to use it out, for. To take out stuff. But these got gorgeous. Mom, to like take out one at a time. Yeah, take them out. Shove a bunch of kids on there. Oh my gosh, look at these pins. Oh, come back every year. Ooh, yeah, these are all. Everything in here is perennials that come back. Okay, friends, we made it back from the cabin. Actually, day before yesterday, um, very long drive, very long day. Weston and Everett reconfirmed that they love flying in the airplane. It's so much quicker. Bennett and I enjoyed the drive, but it did feel very long and very draining. But we're happy to be home. We came home early because Bennett had middle school like orientation day yesterday. So we wanted to make sure to get back in time for that. And then Mark and Hunter left on their goat hunt. Well, unfortunately it's now been a day and a half. The goat hunt didn't go so well. It just got um, poor weather, really foggy and bad conditions really quick. So they were out for about 24 hours. I got a call last night. They are back safe at the cabin trying to come home, but they are fogged in. So the hunt didn't go so well, but we did have a great time at the cabin. Our goals for the cabin were to get some halibut for the freezer. We accomplished that. So grateful to have that in the freezer. We did end up spending $150 in gas, just refilling up the gas tank and um, like $30 to freeze the fish. But for all the fish that we got, we'll be able to eat. Between the halibut and the salmon, we'll be able to eat fish every week for the next year, which is always the goal to have enough to eat it for the next year. So we're really happy with that for the summer season. The fish is ready and in the freezer. So I did have a couple more questions that I wanted to answer about the cabin before I close up this video, but oh, we had a great time. 
the, oh, the second part of after the fish was just family time. We really, really enjoyed getting to visit with Mark's sister here from England. And I just kept forgetting to pick up the camera because so many things were going on. And, um, you know, I had to be mom. I was auntie. Um, we were cooking food for everybody. And so it just kind of became a blur those two days. I always think, oh, I'm going to get like around and introduce everybody. But we had a wonderful time visiting with them. It was very short. We will hopefully get to see them in a couple of days when they get back from the cabin. So, um, do you get bears around the cabin and have they got inside? So really, thankfully, we don't have a problem with bears at the cabin much. Um, we've seen them in the distance, like in the lagoon. We have had one kind of come, we know they have come through around the cabin. They've never gotten inside. We do put boards in front of the door. Um, we don't leave any food there, like underneath. We lock up underneath where we keep our coolers and stuff. Um, thankfully the bears have so much to eat there. They're often just like at the salmon streams or up eating the berries, um, lots of grasses and things like that. There are only black bears at the cabin, um, no brown bears. They could become a problem, but thankfully they haven't become a problem. I actually haven't even seen a bear there. I don't think in a couple years. So, well, maybe last year we saw one way down in the lagoon, like with binoculars. Um, so no real bear, no real problems with bears, thankfully. Okay. Um, the other question was, have you ever had any moose problems at the cabin? Uh, we, we have seen, my brother-in-law saw one moose come out of the woods at the cabin. It's just not really a moose populated area. We know there have been some, we've seen some poop and things, but there really is a very, very low population. Why do you leave the skin on one side of the salmon? I don't know, the halibut skin peels off really easy. Uh, we leave it on the salmon. It seems to help it not get freezer burned. And then once you cook it, it's so easy to pull the, like peel the fish off. We've just always kept it. I'm sure you could um, fillet both sides, but then you would run the risk of losing more meat. And we just wanna get as much meat as possible off of that fish fillet. So I think that's why we leave the skin on. We actually, have some kids that like to eat the fish skin. We do always scale it. I don't think we show that very often, but we always take a butter knife and scale off all the scales so that skin is no longer slimy and gross. It gets it really nice and clean. What is the latest month you visit the cabin? We usually will go in like September, October, early October at the latest and close up the cabin. That means they pull the boat out of the water um, get it all cleaned up and ready for winter, um, get any food out of the cabin that will not last the winter, and uh, close up the stove pipe so nothing drips down over the year and just make sure everything is closed up. Um, what would you do if you ever got stranded and ran out of food? Um, we would have to just go shopping. There is a grocery store in Soldovia, a very well-stocked grocery store. Um, we do keep backup food. Like we have a whole bin of backup food, like pasta, pasta sauce, some snacks that we keep there all the time. I try and bring enough food every single time for that trip. But at the beginning of the year, we kind of bring some staple items, some ramen soup, some extra canned food. So we always have some extra things. And then if it's something that will stay good for the whole summer, we will leave it down there. So there's always extra food, but we could go across the bay and get food from Soldovia. Um, that is an option. Okay, some of these questions are not about the cabin, so I will save them for another. <sighs> okay, have you ever been stranded at the cabin longer than you intended to stay? Rather, it was weather related, boat broken, or plane broken. Uh, we have had to stay at the cabin longer than we planned because of bad weather, getting fogged in. Um, one time the bay was way too wavy to get across to get onto the ferry. Um, so a few times we have. Um, most of the time we just make sure we have enough stuff to kind of be safe either way. We will often also watch the weather and if we know that the weather is gonna turn really bad and it's a nice day, it is so hard to leave on a nice day, but we will take that chance and leave that day so that we don't get stranded there, especially if we need to get home for something else. So we have done that several times. We've left early instead of getting stranded. This question says, when you do get all your fishing done for the winter, I see a lot in the videos where Mark and the boys catch them and throw them back. 
So there's different reasons why they might be throwing fish back. One, it might be too small or too big. There are fishing requirements, like you can't keep every fish all the time. It also could be that we got to a certain number and they just still wanted to fish. We don't do that a lot, but, um, or it's just not big enough of a fish. There's a couple reasons you might see that happen. Okay, I think I made it through all of the cabin questions. I will look back at this and answer these some of these other questions. Questions about like telling the boys birth stories, um, questions about my parents hunting, which I can give you the quick answer. My dad used to hunt deer when I was like a baby with my older brothers. Um, he's not into hunting anymore, but he does love fishing. Um, that is, Mark's family does love hunting. They just always lived off of moose meat and fish. And so we have carried on that tradition. Thank you so much for coming to the cabin with us. It was a very quick trip. We are gearing up for back to school. So this was just a nice end of summer saying goodbye to the cabin. And now it is time to kick into gear and get ready for going back to school. Thank you so much for spending time with us. We love you. We're so grateful for you. And we'll see you again real soon for more of this Alaska life.